everybody, and welcome to today's Barnes Takeout. My name is Amy Gillette. I'm a collections researcher. Today we're headed upstairs into room number 17, um, a small corner room. And I think one of the most fascinating, it's got a lot of smaller works, works on paper, um, some of which were among the very last that Dr. Barnes collected, such as these little um, watercolor gouaches by the German artist Wolves who we looked at last week. And today what we're going to be looking at is this image over here entitled Place Signs, painted in the year 1926 by Swiss-born German artist Paul Klee. And it is um, in this room amongst a bunch of other paintings by Klee um, here and here. And well, here, of course, it's dependent to um, this one by him entitled Sicilian Landscape. And oh, this one and this one and this one and this one and this one too. So definitely um, a Paul Klee intensive wall. And I quite like the arrangement because um, this, this artist evolves and um, was definitely inspired to a high degree by, by Paul Klee. So headed on in, let's take a look at place signs. Oh, and another thing I thought I should point out is I think this image right here of a cat would make Paul Klee very happy because he loved cats. So um, here's place signs. And it's, like we said, a, a watercolor on paper. It's arranged basically into a grid. Um, you might be able to see the sort of patchwork effect that he's made some um, washes, some that might remind you a bit of, of water, perhaps, or um, or stone. We've got these little tufts of, of grass and then um, some apparently pine trees that honestly remind me of those cell phone towers that are dressed up to look like trees. And there's it seems to be a ladder over here, the negative of a ladder, a bowl, um, and what looks like a building facade, and then this rectangular area, this patch with, with what seem to be eyes, a checkerboard, um, all of these with halos around, and then I suppose these are the signs of the title, this kind of spade and this cross or, um, or plus sign up here. And down here we've got um, Paul Klee's uh, signature, the date, as well as the title in German, um, Ortsleichen. So we know that the title is his own place signs. So what is happening in this picture? And um, let's go ahead and start to dig a bit, a bit further into it. So first, um, here's the artist himself, um, Clay, with his wife, Lily. And I mentioned he loves cats, and this was his favorite, his um, favorite kitty named uh, Bimbo, actually. And I wanted to bring in these two images over here to introduce the style that he's working in with place signs. And so Clay had gotten his career started as um, really just working as in drawing in, in black and white. But he and he struggled with color for a long time until he took a trip to Tunisia in the year 1914 with some of his artist buddies. And there the um, the bright Mediterranean light, the um, the sea, the buildings, um, the light, the shadows opened his eyes um, to color. And this is a painting that he painted there. You might be able to see the date 1914 and its um, view of Cairo, the city there, that he did um, figure out how how to use color in terms that he described as almost spiritual. And I love the very warm, almost honey-like glow that we see in this image. You can um, pick out the, the domes of the building against um, what's resolved basically into a, a patchwork of, um, of these almost like vibrating colors in their warmth. And on this same trip is when Clay also discovered what he called his, his square paintings, where um, a square in an image can describe a, a, a place, like a physical place, but he also liked their um, planar quality for being partly imaginative and, um, and cerebral in addition to physical. And then down here, we've got um, a notebook that he was working on, on color theory when he was during the years when he was working at the Bauhaus in um, the 1920s into the 1930s. And so at the same time that he painted place signs. And again, we've got these grids and um, lots and lots of very theoretical ideas about the ways in which um, these patches of color work together in order to mimic music um, and to um, 
And to give the to give the picture shape both in itself as well as in the eyes and minds of its viewers. And so to move on um, a bit with that, another thing that Clay really did want to bring to his work of art is um, to wed it with music. And so I, I mentioned as well that his wife was a, a musician. And here he is with his very good friend, Vasily Kandinsky, um, that he worked at, he worked with during the Bauhaus years before the, um, the Nazis shut that down and labeled Clay and many others degenerates. But I, I love this picture of, Friendship, and you may know Kandinsky, one of whose paintings entitled Composition is down here, also really did try to wed um, visual and the musical arts. And for me, the Kandinsky's are somewhat easier to see as, as somebody who's not, who doesn't understand music very well, but I, um, I can almost hear like a musical wave here, the way that um, you might think about like dragging the bow over the strings of a violin. We've got a lot like in play signs, we've got these circular areas here, um, maybe a bit like the checkerboard here that seem to have these halos that remind me perhaps of musical reverberation. And then maybe these are musical lines that Kandinsky himself has turned into grids. And looking at Clay's, he's, he did, as I mentioned a minute ago, try to work this out partly with respect to color theory. and. I think he was probably kind of going for a light, gentle major key for the way in which he's paired complementary colors, um, colors that sort of make each other pop, like the the peach over here against this blue. Um, maybe if you sort of squint at it, you can see like a page of sheet music um, or something like that. Maybe the signs as well can operate almost as, as musical signs. Um, and yet I don't think there's really supposed to be a one-to-one -one relationship with any particular music. Um, just in rather Bauhaus terms, he was trying to um, weld them together for this like totalitizing artistic impact. And another, um, another major inspiration for Clay that I want to show you for just a sec too, before we pivot to looking again at, um, at place signs and what it might really be showing is he loved Landscapes by Paul Cezanne. Um, this is one by Cezanne uh, downstairs in room number two, entitled A View of Gardana City in France. And what Clay admired so much that I think you can see to great effect here is um, the honeycombing that Cezanne had created by basically taking things in space, fracturing them into all these um, squares and cubes and kind of like pushing them um, up against the picture plane. And I think with play signs, with looking at a landscape like this, I want to come down on the place because I think it does actually show a place. Um, so starting in the year 1924, when Clay had painted Sicilian landscape over here, um, he did visit the Mediterranean every summer and got to be fascinated with the archaeological sites that are everywhere in the region. And here I wanted to show you this um, Roman city Timgad in Algeria, because you can you can probably guess, but we see the grid pattern, both of the streets as, um, as well as the, the buildings that have been excavated, showing us these different rooms in all of the structures. And I think that the patchwork um, that he's giving us in these Mediterranean pictures, Sicilian landscape, as well as place signs, um, could make reference to um, to these ancient cities, uh, to archaeological sites, and um, maybe also to mosaics that were uncovered in these archaeological sites. Like, um, I, here's a checkerboard pattern that you might rec recognize from place signs that is from the Roman port city Ostia, and, and here's a later Roman mosaic um, showing their, I guess, real flair for putting things in grids. Um, in this case, it looks like a lot of dinner items like this boar, mushrooms, vegetables, chicken and eggs and stuff. So maybe, um, maybe his image is looking to mosaics. And another thing that I think to go with that is I think that the picture itself is supposed to operate as a kind of archaeological site where, um, here, let me actually show you an image that my um, my friend and colleague, Kaylin Jewell, sitting in an archaeological square right here has um, has shared with me, um, having worked in the past herself as an archaeologist. And 
um, and the process of digging. And so on the left hand side here, you can see the um, archaeological grid lines that they've used to mark and organize the site and say where things were found, um, which again reminds me so much of Clay's grids. And then um, systematically digging the holes too. Um, she says this, this is a, a two by two hole um, with a one by one cube um, that they're resting against in here. And she um, assures me that archaeology is just like Minecraft if your children like to play that game. Um, so it's a very structured way of discovering um, strata of what may be um, below the surface in an archaeological site and also a kind of um, gestalt of making sense of, um, of the whereabouts and patterns of what you find in order to create a narrative. And I think that Clay really is saying that the visual arts um, are not just like music, but like archaeology too, where in the interface between the artist, the image, and you, you're looking at it, trying to put the pieces together. And I think we've got these um, signals to show our own agency in signification as a way of um, as a way of taking the work that is there with whatever inherent meanings it may have, but also realizing that we ourselves are always going to be part of the process of um, of constructing meaning for art, for places, um, for any other things that we encounter and try to comprehend in our lives. And so that's it for today's Barnes Takeout. And thank you so much for, for watching. I'm Tom Collins, Neubauer Family Executive Director of the Barnes Foundation. I hope you enjoyed Barnes Takeout. Subscribe and make sure your post notifications are on to get daily servings of art. Thanks for watching and for your support of the Barnes Foundation.